Real Madrid then just too shy of the record that the club set back in the 50s when they reached five consecutive European Cup finals. It's weird. We're sat here again and we're talking about Real Madrid and you look at it, Craig. They've knocked out PSG, they've knocked out Juventus, they've knocked out Bayern Munich. We should be sat here lauding, telling everyone how great they are, but they weren't great today. They could be in the final now they're there. They could be, <laughs> but they haven't been. I mean, they're getting there and they've got some great players, but they're getting some great luck. And they're getting some great help. The officials again. I mean, there's two good penalty calls there. Ramos and Lewandowski, Marcelo yeah. handball. Then you've got the huge mistake from the goalkeeper. Then you've got the huge slice of luck that he got his team rot. How the hell mm. can he go into that without Casemiro? I mean, unless he was injured and not fit, I, I, I don't know, because there's a gaping hole in the middle of the park that Bayern Munich were taking advantage of, but they couldn't push that onto the final third. The chances they missed, Bayern Munich, they could have buried this game two times over. And they can talk about David Alaba coming back and all that. That's great for Bayern going forward. But you've got to defend the back post as a fullback. And the way that he allowed Real Madrid to get back in the game with the Benzema equaliser, it's almost as if, and we've talked about this, Stevie does his head in, defending has almost an art that's gone out of the game now for a lot of people. Mm. Uh, and, Teams just don't want to do it. And that was epitomised by both sides, mm -hmm. who were supposed to be, you know, very much at the top of their domestic leagues, two of the best teams in the world. Yet the opportunities they gave up and the schoolboy errors they made at the back were unbelievable. Uh, Stevie's boy, Sergio Ramos, to start off three minutes in, trying to clear a ball with his, with his, I don't know, the outside of his right foot when he's facing his own goal, makes a mistake, and now all of a sudden we have ourselves a ball game. We have ourselves a situation where now you're sort of hanging on. And you're hanging on because you know you're not playing well. And you're getting destroyed out of the midfield. There was no real presence out of the midfield for Real Madrid. So Kovac is just running all over the place. Tony Cruz is running all over the place. Luka Modric is running all over the place, but not organized. Nobody's really covering the, 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 the ground the way it should be. They're not organized behind the ball. And so then you're Bayern Munich. And you, you've done your part. You scored that, that early goal. And so now you, was when you have to be very intelligent as to how you approach the game. And uh, 10 minutes later, you're giving up a goal, an easy goal. Yes, it is well played by Real Madrid, and yes, it's a good ball by Marcelo, but it's so easy at the back post, as Craig was referring to. All right, so then you're going to halftime, and you're Bayern Munich, and okay, here we go. We, we've been better than they have been. We're going to attempt in the second half to get the goals that we need. And not even a minute in, Sven Allright does what he does, and at that point, you just kind of go... Do, does anybody want to win this? Yeah. Does anybody want to go through? And really, nobody really made a case for themselves today. Not Bayern Munich, not Real Madrid. Madrid are so stubborn in this, com in this competition. Mm. I can't make my mind up who to blame. You know, most of me is blaming Bayern because... It was there for them. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Listen, you, the, the, there's, there's no accounting for, for Ulrich doing what he did. I mean, it's just, it's just from left field. But honestly, if I'm Bayern, I'm looking at the front three. I'm looking at Ribery, I'm looking at Muller, and I'm looking at a guy who up until this season was in the argument for the best centre-forward on mm. the planet. Mm. I thought he was absolutely awful over both legs, and I thought tonight he was terrible as well. His touch was off. Lewandowski. He, Lewandowski, I beg your pardon. It, it's the front three for me. At the end of the day, um, I think... James Rodriguez and Tolisso uh, and Alcantara got them enough of the ball. Right. They didn't use it. To your, point, good enough. to your point about Lewandowski. I would be okay with Lewandowski if he hadn't come out on many occasions and, and complained about the fact that he wasn't the leading goal scorer yep. in the Bundesliga or that they didn't do this or that Bayern doesn't go and get players or that they haven't done this. Okay, well, now here's your chance. Here's your opportunity. You have the ball in front of you with Kaylor now as you got to score. You have to score. That's the level that you think you're, you're on. So at that point, then, if you're going to criticize everybody else in the organization, if you're going to point the finger there and there and there and everywhere, then at some point, you have to score the big goal. And once again, he came up short. You think about Frank Ribery in the first game, with the, hell, the horrendous touch when he was through one and one yep. mm. gave it up. Then there was the chance for Lewandowski mm. right at the end. Second half, dinking it over the goalkeeper, shanked it wide. There's been several chances in tonight's game, including the one where Ribery went down the left and Thomas Muller was in the box on his own. And for one of the first times in, in Ribery's career, he didn't pick his head up. Right. And, and that's kind of where we were with Bayern Munich. They found themselves down the channel 
enough times in this game in good areas and couldn't get it done. But I tell you what, we had four teams in the competition. We've got three left now, but none of them can defend. No. Mm -mm. Now, people will say to me, well, Roma, their defensive record at home is great. <laughs> you watch them at Liverpool. <laughs> they could have gave up ten. <laughs> and Liverpool's defence has got better. But it's coming from a very, very low bar. This competition isn't going to be won by a team who's going to scrap it out. It's going to be won by a team that's going to go hell for leather who gets the most goals. When it comes to your right, and say if Grobelar did that back in the day, Stevie, how did the team react? He'd have picked it up, wouldn't he? Well, well, back yeah. in those yeah, days. Yeah, it was. It's, uh, what, what do you do as a teammate? Because he's got to be yeah, absolutely gutted. Yeah, no, you, you, nothing. You just give him a slap in the back, try and encourage him. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it's just an, a horrendous mistake. It's, it's as bad as the front three were, it, it's more than anything probably cost you the game. Yeah, so when people talk about uh, Manuel Neuer is not available and whether that's an excuse or not, well, this doesn't happen to Manuel Neuer. Sure. It doesn't. It and, and so there is, yes, it is an element of an excuse when you're saying that there are players missing, and even more so when you had your chances yourself. But when you have a mistake like this, this is... This is next level of Shaka Strauss. This is a, a whole new category. It's like a block in the mind because it just... Yeah. A team, a team like Bayern Munich have to have a better backup goalkeeper. Mm. You know, because that, mis that mistake... You know, the reason, the reason why certain players get to the top is because of what goes on between their ears. You know, they, they figure things out quickly and they make a good decision. This guy, this guy in this game, Ulrich... <laughs> didn't make a decision, couldn't figure it out, and ends up looking like a chump. Well, but here, here's the deal, Stevie. The, the, this is one of the issues with the modern game for goalkeepers. Not everybody can be a, an Ederson or a Manuel Neuer. The goalkeepers have been asked to do so much more now with their feet and so much more thinking because of the laws, and because of the way a lot of these top teams and top players and top coaches want to play. Now, it was a hell of a uh, suicidal pass from Taliso, and it was his mistake, the goalkeeper, but they've just been asked to think so much and... You know, everyone makes... The man, that, the man that never makes a mistake never makes anything. That's what I would say. Oh, a bit of philosophy oh. uh, from hey. Craig Burley. <laughs> the man that never... Some, Bobby Campbell said that to me once. Son, the man that never makes a mistake never makes anything. It happens, he'll be gutted about it tonight and probably for the next week or so, and then he'll have to move on. Where, where did Bayern go from here? How do they move on? Well, Henk has said he's going to retire because they've tried to get him to stay, to stay on. He said he wasn't having it, so they've gone down the Kovacs route. How he's going to deal with big players, I don't know, because Ancelotti struggled in with that lot. And they've got some older guys. Ribery and Robin in the mid-30s. Martinez can't get around the field anymore. Thomas Muller isn't looking as sharp as he was, uh, although he's still only in his late 20s. I, I, they've got some big thinking to do. Mm. It doesn't help that you have Franz Beckenbauer saying they have a mental block. <laughs> yes. Okay. So when that sort of figure is talking about this group, group of players in that way, I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but there is a point somewhere there that there's a lot of talent and a lot of expectation on this club and, and the things that they should be achieving because of the players that they have available, and yet they get to the stages and, and you see a lack of confidence and self-belief that you don't see regularly from them in the Bundesliga. It gets uncomfortable for them in Champions League and all of a sudden they take a step back. You don't like to see that. Uh, meanwhile, for Real Madrid... Terrible in mm. the second leg at home against Juventus. And they're in the final. Terrible pretty much at, at Bayern as well. They were let off the hook. Awful tonight. Still is, favourites. They got, is, <laughs> is, is this... Just in case. Are these three off nights or is this a, a serious problem for Zidane? No, it's a serious problem. They are where they are in La Liga because defensively they're all over the place. Too many times on too many occasions. But when you have the talent that they have going forward, then that's why they can put a run together uh, in the Champions League. And that's why they, defensively they can't do it in La Liga because they don't have the personnel. You know, you play Kovacic in the middle instead of Casemiro. I have absolutely no idea where that came mm, from. Yeah. Uh, and straight away you could see that nothing was happening. You know, Marcelo, as good as he is going forward... He's horrible defensively. He never closes anybody down. He's always in a bad spot. And then you play Vasquez. At I mean, defensively, they're a the shambles. I have never, ever seen Varane look so unsure in all my life. He, he for me, is the guy that has, that has kept that, well, somewhat kept that back line together. He was shanking clearances and, and getting caught out of position. And then you've got Ramos, who's supposed to be your man, your leader. 
He's your talisman after, what, three minutes? Making a, a schoolboy error. Defensively, really, they, they are, they're, they are. They're in the Champions League final. Yeah, it's yeah. incredible. And, 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 and that's what I'm saying. You know, and, if you're asking about it, the, the way he's going to paint this is, look, we know we need to make changes, right? This is a car that's running on two cylinders, right? Because Bale's out the window, he's not playing. Asensio, the youngster's playing a bit part now. Uh, Ronaldo had a poor start to the season. Benzema's found himself on the bench. Even Modric and Chris haven't been themselves. We've got Casemiro on the bench tonight. And Stevie's mentioned the back four. If he can win the Champions League and they're operating at 50%, 60% of what they have been previously, that's going to be a great season for them because they get to the summer, then they can make the changes. Yeah. But it can still be a hell of a successful season with a car that's tanks only half full.